Looking at Mark chapter 2, verse 23 to 27. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. And that's a little bit of confusing passage, and one that I, maybe even now I don't know that I fully understand, but I think the last time I read it, the idea that came strongly through for me was this idea of kind of the spirit of the law, and you can get into really kind of dangerous territory when you start talking about the, the spirit of the law, not the letter of the law, because then you can end up kind of doing things that you want to do um, and just kind of justifying um, not obeying the word of God so to speak and stuff like that but I really think that this is a passage which indicates Jesus's understanding of God and his plan and and the story of the church and all that kind of thing and suggesting that when the laws prohibit us from loving people when they prohibit us from building the kingdom of God then they need to actually fall away the laws were made to enable us to really love God and love people better and so that needs to take um, preference and anything I've just seen this in so many churches where there's kind of rituals and things that are put in place that maybe came about for good reasons and had good precedence and good understanding but I've seen people that have been kind of hurt by getting them wrong um, I think the one example I think of is when I was back on WA team like years ago we were visiting this church and they invited two of the youth guys to do the offering and the one guy they asked him to pray and he'd done the offering and was about to pray and he was wearing a cap in church and the pastor kind of stopped the service and made him take the cap off and he's like yeah we don't pray with hats on in this church and there's kind of a whole history of that I often take my hat off when I pray just because I know in certain cultures and contexts it's a sign of respect and like there's definite good meaning about where that rule is coming from but in this case what it did was it alienated this young guy and I would imagine um, didn't give him a really great experience of church and it's a case of we, we may have lost this guy because we are enforcing this rule which is a good rule but we, we kind of missed out on love and an opportunity to show grace along the way and so I think that's what it's saying and I think when we are led by the Holy Spirit then we will understand what it means by to kind of stick to the spirit of the law and to really understand the heart of the message of, of the Bible, love God, love people. Um, and when we get so rigidly hung up on, on laws and rules and the way it has to be done, we can, we can start clinging to those and start kind of missing the spirit of the law, which in essence is the spirit of God and God himself, and start missing who we are meant to be and how we're meant to be behaving. So... I really think we should constantly be examining ourselves as part of churches, as part of groups, like the rituals we do, the, the, the rules we put into place. When, when do those things really help people worship God and love each other well? And when do those things actually hinder, stop people from doing the very thing they were meant to call them to do? So that's what I take from this passage.